Hello, I am Keisha Boyd, and this is Officially Jorge. We are coming to you on behalf of the Mocha and the Morning family, sending our deepest thoughts and prayers to those who have been affected and who are being affected by Hurricane Michael. This definitely hits close to home as our producer, Shalette, is from Panama City, um, who was definitely affected by this hurricane. So we just wanted to take this time and a moment to acknowledge uh, this natural disaster and definitely send our thoughts and prayers to those who are affected. And we'll be right back. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Officially, Jorge, Hello. my cafe con leche. Hey. Welcome for another week of flavor to your morning blend. Yes. We are so happy to have you. How has your week been? Woo, it has been a week. Yes, it Let has. me tell you, I know I was being silly because uh, I'm still uh, going through my move and everything yeah. like that. And a whole bunch of stuff. Yes. Delivered yesterday. Anybody yes. want you? I'm going to get some <laughs> in my ears. I'm like, I just want to like walk out of the house and go to work and be fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. You must unbox those things, right? <laughs> well, we have a lot coming up for you for the show, but... Welcome back, everybody. You are watching Mocha in the morning, and I have some steamers for you. Yes. <laughs> First up, Nick Cannon. Hey. You know, let me tell you, Nick Cannon is in talks with Fox. Actually, he just inked a deal with Fox to do a late night series, right? So, you know, one thing I can say about Nick, he might not be the best rapper, but he is about his money. Look, he's going okay? wild out wild on late out night on television. Late night television. That's right. So he'll be um, hosting and co-producing this show yeah. for for Fox, and I think it's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens from there because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot more to that story. And just Absolutely. for those of you from Identity Tampa Bay, hello, welcome to our hey, show. Hey, Identity Tampa yeah. Bay. If you don't know what a steamer is, a steamer is basically the stories that are kind of happening and they're bubbling up, and we know that there's more that's going to come from them. Absolutely. Not only that, did yes. you also see what Will Smith did? Ooh. He, on his Instagram, there yes, was like a genie and a bottle. Yes, so I'm like, ooh, he's going to be a fine genie. Wow. <laughs> I, have a, I have no idea where that came from. Like, all of a right. sudden, he's an Aladdin, he's yeah. going to be the genie, and like, you know when that celebrity just puts like, an image yeah, and you're like you okay know. that's it like more and more and more mm -hmm. anyway so I'm pretty sure there's gonna be more stuff you know coming out with that movie like, yes. I'm, I don't even know anything about it but I'm like I can only imagine it's going to the be budget. awesome the budget right <laughs> first of all the budget to even get him so make sure you stay tuned <laughs> to that to that to Mr. Smith one and, more steamer yes okay um, did you know that um if you're an immigrant child, and let's just say that you've been put in a cage and your parents have been, like, deported. You know. Okay, let's just say, like, that's happening. Because our good government is, you know, doing that. So good. Well, those kids can be, like, put up for adoption and without their parents' consent or even knowing that they're up for adoption. Oh, my God. Whether, like, so... whether it's a language barrier or they make us sign a piece of paper, whatever. Sometimes, in a, uh, according to Huffington Post, uh, there's a story out there saying that some of these kids could end up being adopted without the consent of their parents. Wow. I mean, it's different if you like, hey, listen, like... I can't I, take care of my kids. Not like, we're going to snatch your child away from you, send you back. And anyway, so... 
I'm just now hearing of this, and I'm pretty sure when it gets around, yeah, um, people are just going to be outraged. That not I mean, only worry, we're already outraged by the yeah. situation anyway, but to just, just another level. It's levels to this. It's levels to this. Well, stay tuned to that. We'll be right back with Pipe and Hot. This segment is brought to you by BlackInTheBay.com, your online connection to everything that's Black in the Bay. Log on now for news, updates, and events. All right, did you enjoy that mocha moment? I mean, we have them spread all through the show because we want to see more yes. of your mocha moments. So if you have them, make sure you send them to us. But now it is time for Mocha in the Morning's Piping Hot segment, yes, honey. Piping hot. We have things that are just bubbling over yes. for you, our wonderful audience. Yes, take a sip. <laughs> now, let's talk about this. You know, this reverend. He got arrested. He got Sorry, arrested. <laughs> the, the preacher done gone to jail. <laughs> he done locked up. Uh oh, he gonna get him out. He locked up. He was a bad boy. Oh my lord. No, he was actually really, 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 really good because um he was like protesting. He was protesting yeah, for union rights. How That's right. So the the same day that he got an award, right? Yeah, he got a, a MacArthur Genius. Grant Award. Thank you. He was arrested for protesting in Chicago with the Workers for the Union. Kia, did you hear about that? I did. And just so you guys know, that grant is $625,000. Ooh, wow. So I, I, him protesting for a good cause and he gets a good reward. So a little arrest is no big deal. I, I know that's right. Shoot, right. he said, I'll take a couple hours in the in the, in the jail. Well, you can arrest me you for, can, less. for less. <laughs> People go to jail for less money all the time. <laughs> well, you know what, what I like about Rev? The Reverend is that um, he is such an activist and he's so outspoken, but he is so super, super diverse. He's mm -hmm. about equality for everyone. Yeah. You know, sometimes people like to select you know, certain groups mm -hmm, that are called these four, but he is all the way, all the way live with every single group. He wants diversity and equality for all of them. So That's awesome. pretty stand that guy. All right, so moving on to our next piping hot segment. There is a new movie coming out. Um, you can see it, you know, as early as this weekend, but it officially comes out in theaters October 19th, I mm -hmm. believe. But The Hate You Give, I've heard so much about The Hate You Give in the movie mm -hmm. and how good the movie is. It stars Amanda Steinberg from the Hunger Games. From the from the Hunger Games, and she is well, her boyfriend yeah. gets killed, and she has to kind of just navigate through this. You have some awesome, awesome, awesome actors and actresses, including Issa Rae, uh, Regina Hall, who are going to be a part of this. Let's go and take a quick view of a clip of the movie. Where he told you. Go out. I'm not playing. Go back. <laughs> what did you do? Today, Garden Heights is reeling after the shooting of a 17 year old black teenager by a white police officer. We live in a complicated world. It doesn't seem that complicated to me. You know, when I first saw the, um, this preview, mm -hmm. like, for whatever reason, like, I didn't even even think of it about being a movie. I just yeah. thought like it was yet another news story. Got it. I mean, that's what it felt like to me. I was yeah. like, I was watching like the news again. Boom. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Yeah, right? which is absolutely unfortunate. So, um, one thing too, which is crazy, Amandla was getting some flack because she is a fair, you know, skinned black woman, beautiful as we all are. But she got a little flack because she wasn't as dark as mm -hmm. the character in the book. But, um, News to say, she also talked about how she was sexually assaulted mm. twice and how she blamed herself. And, you know, obviously this is a time where we're talking about sexual assault quite a bit. And so for her to come out and share her story and, and her feelings and how she blamed herself for this was, uh, it was a lot. But I'm so glad to see that she's still doing well and has, you know, is overcoming it and dealing with it mm -hmm. and, and, and able to open up about it. Well, it's great that even you know, young women like that are finding their voice and taking that power and they are expressing it now and not, you know, letting years and years and years of damage and doubt 
you know, and just holding on to that insight. So I think it's awesome that she's like on it and getting it out now mm -hmm. because that means the, the sooner she can do that, the faster she can heal yeah. and the quicker somebody can go to jail. Kia, what do you, what do you think about the new movie coming out? I just want to do a public service announcement to all black women. We gotta stop with the colorism with, between ourselves. We yes. gotta stop it. It's getting a little ridiculous. Amandala is a great actress. She does great in the role I hear. Let's just get over the fact that she's not dark enough to play the role. She was the best actress to portray the role. End of conversation. Absolutely. Totally agree. As one black woman to another and many, absolutely. We're all different shades of absolute amazing beauty. So yes. I am all for yes, that. Thank you, Kia. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about your sister, Bette Midler. Okay, who, who, she's my what? Yes, uh, she is dominated to me. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Not even from a distance. Listen. Do I want to see that lady? Honey, Bette Midler. <laughs> what is her deal? Like, I, she's from New York. She, she's Jewish. She thinks she could just say stuff? Listen, Bette Midler used the N word in a tweet saying that uh, women are viewed as the N-words of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Not black women, just women. And okay. I'm like, what? It was a she did, okay. I mean, does she get, uh, does she a, get a, white, pass? a white pass? A white pass? Because she did a, a Why are we pass? calling it a white pass? Does she get a black pass? Does she get any type of pass? Does she get any kind of pass? Because she's, I mean, so she apologized and she thinks this is okay, but obviously this is not her first time with this. Kia, you like you're burning up to talk, girl. I am. Okay, and in Bette Miller's defense, this was a music lyric by John Lennon. It's a music lyric that she was posting, so it's not like something she made up herself. Mm. And I feel like for some white women, we need to sometimes say, we know you're trying to help, but you, we need you to help over there and be quiet. We need you to not be all hopeless <laughs> stuff. We just needed to hold a sign. But I will say what the funny part is, is watching the old white lady shade she's getting from other old white actresses. Like, you can't say the N-word. Like, it's, it's pretty funny. But I mean, I yeah. Pass. I give her a pass. I don't give her a pass because okay. she should know better. Well, this is the she thing, does. and this is how I've had discussions about this because we all know how we are socially with our friends. Mm -hmm. And um, a very smart, beautiful black woman mm -hmm. um, educated me on this, uh -huh. uh, provided me some insight. Yes, with her name Shalai. My wife. <laughs> and, um, and the thing our is, wonderful producer. it's like, if it's in your vernacular, right, mm -hmm. it wouldn't make sense that maybe that comes out of your mouth. But I seriously doubt that the N-word is anywhere near best vernacular. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just think that there, I do believe that there are some people who need to be more sensitive uh, to certain subject matters and words than other people. Like, I don't see her hanging out, you know, with the cast from Empire. And, and rolling with the homies. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not her life. So, she if that's about not, that life. Yeah, if that's not your life, then you don't know, refer to it. You can't. You just can't. That's not your experience. Even though, for me, those words aren't don't hold any power kind of well, thing. But it's like, but I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I'm not going to go out and whatever. I just, right. No pass for me either. No pass. Yeah. And, and speaking of the white pass, let's talk about your girl, Taylor Swift. Who? Why do you keep saying these people are my friends? Okay, okay. <laughs> so, you're right. You're right. You're right. Taylor Swift, right? Look, so everybody's talking about Taylor Swift. There's a bad letter right Listen. here, Jameer <laughs> We are never, ever getting together. Say ever. This ever. Ever, ever. Okay, saying that she was, you know, the the push for voter registration. And that because her, her what did she put, like a tweet or lyric or something out there? Yeah, she... Um, her post. Yeah, it was at the uh, Blackburn in Tennessee running for office. And then she actually, this is the first time, like, I've ever seen, like, or, you know, Taylor Swift has ever, like, been out in the open. For me, it's kind of like, oh, now because it's safe, right? Mm. But where were you when we was out marching, doing the thing? You know, but now you got, you know, you don't want all these awards and you feel comfortable. Now you want to pick a side? So I don't know. I'm really on the fence, although I'm happy that she is using her voice using her voice and being vocal. I just kind of be like, Taylor, girl, we could have used you like maybe a year ago. I mean, I, ago. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all good for it. Kia, what do you think about this? I hate Taylor Swift. But <laughs> <laughs> well, hate tell us how you really Taylor. feel. Milk mayoness, I can't stand it. But she did help increase voter registration in one day by sixty-four thousand people registered to vote. I mean, 
mean, do you really think it was all her? It happened an hour after she said that. So I'm gonna kind of give her. I'm gonna give her this one. I'm sorry. Give her, okay. I think she's stunting her. there, and I think that at the expense of you know, again, like thank you, and I hope that these people who register to vote, um, vote. I, hope, I hope the odds are forever in our favor. Absolutely. But like, I don't know, I'm like, girl, you kind of late. We've been out here marching with signs for a very long time. And now you want to show up in a disco ball looking dress you up at AMAs. Listen, and first of all, thank you, Taylor, for your, we thank you, girl, for, for getting folks out to vote. Thanks, sure girl, to vote. I'm still not buying your Now, music. let me t- <laughs> Her is not a hater. But I'm glad, that she, I'm, I'm glad that she's going to get out to vote. Listen. So, speaking of Taylor, roll on like you said. She did show up look like a disco ball at the AMA. <laughs> from head to, look, from shoulder to toes, literally, she was covered yes. in glitter. Like, well, yes. whatever it is. But, I mean, you know what, Taylor, like, she may eating some collard greens or something. She got really? a little thick on her. Yeah. You so? uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, um... No. I just saw a disco ball. I saw that too, but I know that she's she wasn't as she got a little okay. Mm-hmm. I heard she got a boo though, so maybe she you know oh, okay she's eating late at night. Eating late at night, <laughs> <laughs> boo up okay. Who else? Cardi B. Oh my goodness. Let's the talk Car- about Cardi. Oh Cardi B. Yes. Stunning. Yeah. Everything about she did that night was se lo comió. Oh. Yeah. So they call her hashtag trap Selena. <laughs> Kia, what did you think about that? Uh, one, Taylor Swift did have her butt done. She had it done two years ago. Yep. Oh, did uh, she? she oh, okay. She was also wearing custom ball main. I was a fan. Cardi uh-huh. B, she is, she, I don't like the Trap Selena thing, but I get it. Like, she's straight up for the people. She wants to be all, you know, I'm still me, just like Selena was. But she is Trap Selena because she's beating up strip club hoes. So, yeah. <laughs> I just think she's holding her, she's standing her ground. Listen. You know, no, but oh, no Jennifer way. Lopez. You saw Jennifer Lopez? Yes. She's always stunning. She's always stunning. Uh, and of course, she was like singing, 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 Ugh. singing. Listen, I love me some Jennifer Lopez. I've never seen Jennifer Lopez live, but that is one Latina sister that I would love to see in a live performance. I'm going to find you, Jennifer. I'm going to have to come wherever well, you are. Well, let's go to Vegas. Let's go to Vegas, her right? show, and it was fabulous. Yes, okay. You, we'll but come yeah, to Vegas. she was stunning. And then um, Kelly Rowland. Yes. Sierra yes. was beautiful. Oh, my God, Miss Elliott shows up on stage. I know. And then did you see the part where her, that lady that was on social oh, media. the fucking white the sister. The fucking white sister was in the audience. I thought that was so amazingly cute. It really was. Funky and Sierra right had her baby there, Little Future. And oh, he was the so cute. We talked about mocha moments on the carpet. And honey, I just kept looking at Sierra. But her legs were like, boom, 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 boom. That girl is in shape. She looks great. But people, you know, we had some winners. We had some losers on the red carpet with fashion. But overall, we saw some really, really good stuff. Yeah. I think the people that like we know are going to yeah. show up and look fabulous. They do. They did. Who is your favorite, Kia? Um, My favorite as far as creativity was Cardi B. Mm-hmm. And then my favorite, as far as just still looking good for her age, I actually like Tyra Banks' look. I thought her mm. look was kind of cute, funky, and fresh. And then my worst look was Post Malone. Like, I get it. Oh, my gosh. Eclectic, but yo, homie, all that wasn't necessary. <laughs> it, was, it was too much. It was the blue and the leopard and the leopard and the shoes and then the cup. He it was, was, it was too much. Yeah, he was team too much for sure. Mm. But let's talk about who's doing the most and getting rewarded for it. These Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees. We're talking Shaka Khan. We're talking... Well, Janet Jackson. I hate to talk about Janet Jackson again, right? And LL Cool J. The Lady Low Cool J. They're all up. For yeah. you know, inductees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, so we got to we got to vote. We got to like yeah. get involved in the situation. Now, some of these people, I don't understand why they are not already already in the Rock and Roll Hall yeah. of Fame. Yeah, um, Chaka Khan should definitely. Yeah, Questlove actually uh, Chaka Khan and Questlove actually like created like his own like Janet Jackson needs to be in the Hall of Fame campaign. Did he? He sure did. Well, I mean, come on, let's be let's let's be, let's be real, Janet Jackson. You know, shock. I mean, they're all very, very. I mean, Stevie Nicks. Deserving. Yeah, absolutely. Completely deserving. So, we hope that the. Who that would comes you like to see inducted into the Hall of Fame? Kia? 
Well, real quick, you guys. So, you know, you have to wait 25 years after your first solo album to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So that's why some people are just now getting inducted. I actually, and you guys are not going to agree with me, but Bone Hugs, Bone Thugs, and Harmonies on the list, I kind of want them inducted. Oh, oh yeah, me too, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kind of they were a big part of my, like, high school, middle school years. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm all well, for they it. created that trend, that, that, that style kind wow. of thing, of the way that they rap. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. Is Snoop also not... up for nomination? Who is? Snoop. Snoop. Oh, oh, I, I can do Snoop now. Exactly. Oh, Snoop. I can do Snoop. Has it been 25 years since? Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Usher, even... Usher is up as well, you guys. Usher's also on this list to be inducted. Oh, well, now listen. I think, I mean, mm. I get it. There are a lot of people that are on the list, but there are some people that, I mean, come on now. That's true, if, that. And I am going to feel some type of way if... <laughs> Snoop and Usher get in, and Shaka and Janet don't now. Okay, no, then we're gonna have to. We're gonna have an issue. Yeah, I just okay. feel like every single week I'm marching and protesting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in my social life, my oh business my life. Oh my gosh! Oh my uh. gosh! All right, so you guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. And take a look at this little sweet mocha moment. It went actually viral. It's little Kim. Yes. Looking like old school little Kim. Really? Is that possible? Yeah. Send us yours. Just tweet us <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, at Mocha Moment Show. Hashtag Mocha Moment. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for watching Mocha in the Morning. This week, we are going to introduce a brand new segment called Hashtag The Red Eye. And those of you who are coffee drinkers, you know exactly what a red eye is. Basically, that means we need to stay awake. And at Mocha in the Morning, we're going to take that and go into depth with uh, some of these social issues uh, that, that we're talking about on the show. And today, we have a very special guest. And that her name is Allison Kerr, brand strategist, creative director, and she had a very unique opportunity. Welcome to the show, Allison. How are you? I'm great, Jorge. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? Absolutely. Well, let's talk about um, what you just experienced. If you want to share with our audience. Sure. So um, this past Monday, I had an opportunity to. Um, be interviewed on Anderson Cooper's um, 360 on CNN um, with uh, Randy Kay, and we were talking about uh, the whole Brett Kavanaugh situation and just following up um, after his confirmation hearing and um, getting some idea of what independent voters thought, especially independent female voters thought of the entire situation. Okay, so Clearly, <laughs> there were some, uh, you know, different and, and very unique opinions shared on that show. Um, like, you were definitely, definitely, um, your facial expression definitely showed that you might not agree with everything that was said on that show. <laughs> Share with some, with us, with our audience, <laughs> you know. The, the thoughts that were shared on that show and, and the, the difference of opinion that you had with some of that. So um, just to give some context, so there was five women, five of us um, who were interviewed and all of us were from different political backgrounds or registered um, into different parties and but leaned independent. So you had a couple women who were Republican, some were Democrat. Um, but they actually lean Republican and I'm an independent voter and uh, a couple of the other females were too, but you know, I lean more Democrat and then the other females lean more Republican. So, you know, we had a very um, emotional, it was a very emotional discussion because even though I think we all could agree to um, a major extent that the charges, the allegations that um, are against Brett Kavanaugh was, was very, very horrible to think about. You know, we were all on complete opposite sides of the spectrum when it came to whether we thought that Justice Kavanaugh had actually, um, you know, was a was capable of um, doing his job as Supreme Court Justice, um, whether, you know, we actually had, um, you know, a president who cared about, you know, this whole situation. So it was the it was a very heated discussion, um, you know, on these various topics. 
And I think at the end of the day, you know, we came to the conclusion that we have to at least be extremely informed as voters as to what's going on in our country. We can't just wait until something happens and then be reactive. We have to be proactive and understand what the ramifications are of us not being involved. Okay, great. You know, and we're actually going to roll a clip um, of uh, your guest spot on Anderson Cooper's 360. It's just making me want to pay more attention to what is happening in our country right now because there are a lot of things on the table this year that will have huge ramifications going forward and we have to be cognizant of that. <laughs> I know, we better like, better jump in on this, right? I know. <laughs> well, listen, you know, Allison, we certainly appreciate you sharing your experience. Um, obviously, this whole Brett Kavanaugh situation has been a freaking circus, quite honestly. It's just been a mess, um, will be a mess. So we certainly appreciate having you on here to, to share your experience on, you know, Anderson Cooper's 360, you know. Yeah, you know, I also have a question. Okay, uh, on a panel of all women, do you think that when you got on set, that all of you walked in as a group of women and then when the show was over and you left the set, did, how do you think this group left? Hmm. You know, it was, it's funny. I think we were all very cordial and um, after everything was said and done, like nobody was walking away, like wanting to, you know, uh, claw each other's eyes out or, you know, throw, you know, <laughs> fists or be angry or throw in shade in any way. There was, I think there was a mutual respect and understanding for the fact that we all have um, various opinions about things and that those opinions, even whether they're right or wrong, are at least worth being heard. And I think that especially as women right now, we're in a time where our voices are, uh, we're really learning to still find our voice. And so if we can't learn to respect each other's differences and opinions, then how can you expect the rest of the world to? Wow. Yeah, and for me, I think that's probably the hardest part because I, you know, have, you know, have difficulty with that too, mm -hmm. because, you know, the things when you feel in your heart and in your mind with everything in your body that, you know, that you are the correct, you know, yeah. perspective and viewpoint on a situation, it's really difficult to listen to somebody else. This is true. You know, think differently and then to be able to walk out and be like, we're still good, right? Right. Like, I, I mean, that has got to be the hardest thing to do. Yeah, but it's a, it's, it's, it's necessary. For us to move forward, we have to agree to disagree. So, Allison, where do you go from here? You're going to get out that vote? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I know that especially where we live right now, there's um, a lot of um, a lot of things on the table. And so, you know, doing research, like, you know, getting out and understanding what the candidates are really about and, you know, not just looking at the mailers when they come in, you know, for two seconds and throwing them away, but actually, you know, going and doing research on the candidates and, you know, understanding their platforms and, and their goals for what they want to do locally and even on a you know a national level too you know looking at our other um, other offices that are up for vote this year and actually trying to understand the issues that are at stake awesome well thank you once again Allison we appreciate you once again for coming Absolutely. and hopefully we'll have you as a guest in all future shows yes and listen <laughs> if you want to be on milk in the morning uh, and you have a red eye Yes. Topic that we need to stay awake about, let us know. All right, we'll be right back. Listen, I just wanted to tell everybody that I am a proud, 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 proud graduate. Mm. Uh, Florida a and University. Hey. And we just experienced our homecoming and celebrated 131 years wow. as a university. And we also celebrated some history because my good soror, a hey. Delta lady, a Delta woman, is the first <gasps> drum major, first female drum major for Florida a University. It's marching 100, the infamous, yes. often duplicated, mm. but never imitated. Never. Okay, well, never imitate. Always, wait, imitate. All, all, all that. All that, but never duplicate it. All that good stuff. They imitate, but never duplicate. The Marching 100, Corey Bostic, my soror, okay. <laughs> came in, did her thing, looked great. I am so proud of her. And she is our final mocha moment. 
take a look at this mocha moment and also send us your mocha moments if you have any mm -hmm. and don't forget to follow us and watch our show on youtube as well yeah if you want to get more Subscribe, talk. please yeah all right so we'll see you next week i am keisha boy this is my wonderful co-host officially jorge and we'll be back next week and i got one thing to say what hooray march <laughs> Do it, 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 do it,